Hi everyone, I'm Kyle Jones from 11warriors.com. We're gonna try something different with film study this time around. Instead of just the regular written stuff that I've done for so many years, I wanna take it over here to YouTube. We're gonna break down a whole bunch of clips today talking about the run game, what Chip Kelly can bring to Ohio State. Now from a big picture perspective, I chatted with Andy and Dan from Real Pod Wednesdays earlier this week. Check out the link below where you can hear me talking about the philosophy, the fit overall into the Brian Day offense, what Chip can bring there, the, con the contrast with Bill O'Brien. So I recommend checking that out. It's a great compliment to what we're gonna talk about today. Now, before we dive in, I want you to th keep three things in mind that you're gonna see in these clips. First off, Chip is still a great offensive line coach. His teams always seem to perform well up front, fundamentally sound, did a good job with double teams, especially in the zone run game. You're gonna see a lot of that. The second thing you're gonna see He's always bringing new alignments, formations, personnel groups to really put defenses in conflict pre-snap. Now, now, a lot of weeks, he'll have a new look just for that specific defense, bringing in a formation or a look that the, the defense has never seen before and they never run again. That's all meant to put the defense in conflict and make them think. And that's really the third piece is once the play gets going, there's so much to test the eye discipline of the defenders, so much misdirection, so much eye candy to make him look over here when the play is going over there. So I want you to keep an eye on that as we get going here because you're gonna see those three things coming up, up over and over again. So let's dive in. All right, we're gonna show a different way the chip runs outside zone, a unique thing he can bring to Ohio State right away. Doesn't change up a lot for what is one of Ohio State's base runs. It's long been a part of Chip's offense, obviously Ryan Day's, but what Chip is going to bring is a little a bit of a wrinkle in the way that he might block things up. You know, this is going to be a pin and pull that just the backside of this outside zone is going to run. Now, I've highlighted the guard and tackle on what is the backside of the play, our right side. They want to make sure that the defensive tackle that's, that's lined up right in between them doesn't cause penetration, right? So instead of both stepping laterally, you can see the guard is actually going to step down. Make sure he seals off any gaps. There's no way that that 95 is going to create any penetration. But behind that, you'll see the tight end because there's nobody really right there in his immediate block air gap between the, the tight end and the tackle for him to block. He's actually going to end up coming all the way behind that block and lead up on and get to the Mike linebacker. Now, it's a pull, right? It's a pin and pull scheme. Now, watch where he comes from. Number two, the middle linebacker is doing a great job mirroring the back. There's nobody that's gotten up to him, so he's clear. He seems like he's going to be the free hitter to make a play. You know, the, the line up in front, it seems to be doing a good job, but number two's in the way. And all of a sudden, just as, as the back six is foot in the ground to cut up field, two of the middle, middle linebackers ready to make a play, and yet there's a blocker right in his face. Again, watch the backside tight end, comes behind that double team, gets up to the block, gets up and springs a big run. Now, again, I believe this is probably a line call that they're taught at the line. The guard and tackle are letting that tight end know, hey, we're going to take number 95. you got to come behind us. This is not a call in the huddle, but it's a nice way. It just shows the way that Chip teaches the details of the run game, something that Ohio State can definitely benefit from, making sure they've always got numbers towards the point of attack, not getting out defended. Okay, let's talk inside zone. The other big part of Chip's offense for, for years Complement to the outside zone we just showed. Again, just great fundamentals along the offensive line. That's the big difference. Now, as you'll see right away, this is a six-man defensive front. There's only five blockers. Why in the world are you running inside zone in this situation? Most coaches would do anything to get out of it. But the zone read element is still very much a part of what Chip's willing to do. Now, he's going to use the quarterback to block this blue box defender, that edge. That's going to be the zone read. He's going to hold him with the threat of the quarterback run. But the key to this play, at least, is going to be the work of that right side of the offensive line, 54 and 72, the guard and tackle. Now, as I've highlighted with the yellow arrows, the nose tackle is right up on the center. He's actually going to slip to what is our left, uh, try to go through that A-gap with the li Mike linebacker and, and uh, A-gap blitz to the other side. Now, 54 does an excellent job picking it up. This comes through reps. This comes from, from practice, from scouting. Just an excellent job of picking this up, right? Happens so fast. Back times, or the linebacker times it up almost perfectly. 54's got eyes on him right away, though. 62 handles to make, make sure he's got the center, or the, the nose tackle. And 72, excellent job. I'm going to cut off. Because as you can see, as we just as the back's getting the handoff, there's already a hole. There's already a gap. There's nobody behind. Just an excellent, well-blocked play. It was six on five in the box. Who would run that? Chip Kelly. Why? 
because of the way he teaches it, the fundamentals of his own blocking. Any team who's going to have him on their staff is going to benefit Ohio State no different. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. I know I made you eat your vegetables with some zone blocking fundamentals here, but this is really an, a great example of some of the fun stuff Chip will do to mess with defenses. Now, I've, I've highlighted where the center is just to really show this alignment. Now, you've got an extra tackle over to the right side. That's an unbalanced look. You can see that that's a tight end all the way to the opposite side on the left. Now, the, the sideline, the boundary is to our right, which means they've got an unbalanced formation to the right towards the boundary. The back is actually also to that side. This is a goofy look if you're a defense. You're wondering, what is going on? Where are they running it? And as the play progresses, you're going to see two things right away. This is a pin and pull scheme. We showed a little bit of that already. Down block, down block. And you can see right from the get-go, we've got two pullers. You've got the guard who's going to kick out the end here. And you've got the center who's actually going to come around and lead up. So this is very similar to a counter play, actually. Now, it's got pin and pull principles. It's really pin and pull blocking, but it's going to work like counter, right? Because as you watch, look at the back. The back's shoulders are square to the line. He is not going laterally like you would in an outside zone. He's looking straight downhill, right? And that's helpful when you start to play this back. You can see, again, down block, down block. 56 is going to, again, come out, seal the edge. We get that center, comes up. You actually get a crack block from who's our tight end who was split out. Again, another fun, interesting uh, formational look. Springing it for a nice big game. We're again, watch this in full speed, how quickly this hits. Down, down, kick, lead, go. Interesting, you know, good work from the quarterback to get out in front. More good effort, but just a really fun way of blocking this up. Definitely something different. I don't know if you'd call that counter. You'd call that G lead. You'd call that pin and pull. The whole point is defense doesn't know what's coming. They're not ready for it. Chip will bring these plays out probably once a game. He's, you know, for every opponent, he's got something like this where he's taking a base blocking scheme and he's dressing it up in a new way to keep the defense guessing. We've got another pin and pull from an unbalanced look into the boundary. You can see the center in that blue box. You can see the overloaded uh, linemen all the way to our right, three linemen to that direction. There's only one guy who's actually going to block down and pin in this instance. That is our tackle, our original tackle here. He's going to block down. Everybody else is, is going laterally, right? Very simple. Seems like a normal outside zone. The one thing I want you to pay attention to as we get going, there's one extra guy who's here, right? Can you figure it out? Who is this? What's this guy doing? Where'd he come from? Where'd that, where'd that little wide receiver come from, right? All right, let's run it back real quickly. You can see from the get-go, he's in a nasty split, almost replacing a tight end in this, out, in this unbalanced look. There's nobody over him. He's not cutting anybody off right away. And so he's actually going to pull around like everybody else. This is something you see a lot in the NFL from teams like the Rams. This is a big part of what makes Cooper Cup so valuable to the LA Rams. Obviously, chip taken from some of those things that he sees at the next level. That is a new, that's almost a lead blocker now. Now, on this play, 19 is not going to make any great blocks, but this is something, just another way to line up and run a pin and pull scheme a little bit differently. Ohio State would do things like this with Mecca Buka last year before he got hurt. I would definitely anticipate with Chip there. Again, something different, a different way to dress it up, unbalanced, pin and pull into the boundary. How as a defense am I supposed to be able to take that on? Always keeping defenses guessing, taking simple concepts, doing it in a different way. One last look. We've got another unbalanced look from that Oregon game two years ago. You can see the tackle over to our left side as we look from this perspective. But this is actually an interesting front side power, right? So you can see the defense is all jammed up in the middle here. they got really tight alignment. So what's the best way? Why would you run power right into the middle of that? They're actually just going to run a simple front side power wrinkle. Uh, this was something that you saw a ton from Oregon teams with Chip near the end. Their teams would, would clog the middle against inside zone, and so he would say, great, I'm just going to take what you're giving me, right? So how does that work? You're going to see down block, down block, cut off from the center, and then this front side guard is going to pull and lead up. Now you can see the back. It's a pretty simple pretty simple read for him as we get going here really nice easy wrinkle here 
Defense is all caught inside. There's nobody around the edge here, right? Easy to lead, take on that middle linebacker. The Mike, actually, the actual Mike, is back here. He's not able to do anything on the play. He's completely neutralized. He can't get through the wash. He can't get over the top. Again, back front side power behind an unbalanced line into the boundary. Tough look, 33. Tough play to have to take on a pulling guard like that. Good luck next time. All right, so we've got the same play lined up with the sideline view, end zone view. I just want to give you a different perspective at the same time because this is probably one of my favorite wrinkles that I saw watching some of Chip's tape at UCLA. Now, I've, I've highlighted what is the right guard over here on the left side, right? You can see him because as this play gets started, you can see a tight end coming right in motion. He gets got down here. Now, as the play gets started, what is this, what is this guy doing, right? Who is he blocking? Who in the world could he possibly be blocking here? He fakes to nobody in particular, right? Boom. Great, great fame. Well, as we see over here on the right, this is a beautiful trap play. Because 58 reads that block and saying, I got to go blow up this play. I got to get inside. I got to make a play, right? You can see it from both directions. He's getting upfield. He's playing aggressive as a penetrator. But what's happening to him? He is getting trapped, my friend. You can see the backside guard coming across, right? We can see it over here as well. Bang. Opens up this nice gap. Meanwhile, we've got our left tackle getting up, right? Left, left tackle getting up field. That right, or that, that right guard who feigned the block, he's taking the edge. Just a really nice trap scheme, right? This is an old school trap play. This was actually the very first run. You'd call it zero and one in the Oregon playbook years ago. Didn't run it a ton, but it's a nice wrinkle anytime you see a defense really trying to play a zone scheme. They're trying to penetrate in the backfield, create disruption, keep that back from getting, you know, getting upfield. This is a wonderful changeup. This is something that Chip really isn't known for, of course, but he's pulling out this giant library of plays just when he needs it. Again, watching this all in full speed. We'll watch on the left first. Fake block, bam, bam, bam. On the right side. Hits quick. Just really shows the encyclopedic old school football knowledge. It's not all speed. It's not all gadgets. Sometimes it's, if I know what you're going to do, I'm just going to come up with a new way that's not really new. I've been running it for years, but I'm going to come up with a different way to hit you in the mouth. Same idea. We're going to be really physical. If we see the defense doing something that we can take advantage of, we're going to do it. That's how Chip operates. This is the, you know, the USC defense led by Alex Grinch. They're down at the one-yard line, and for some reason, they have not substituted. This is a base look. You've got a 4-3 effectively defense. This is an outside linebacker, outside linebacker, four down. Here's the mic. So this is a 4-3 that you're essentially playing at the one-yard line. So what does Chip do? I'm going to bring in two tight ends. And, of course, as we can all see right here, we've got a nice – T formation backfield. This is a 32 personnel. This is as heavy as you can get. And what is he going to do with it? He is going to run the most old school off tackle double lead for a touchdown. He is willing and able to dial up schemes to do what you do not want him to do, what you are not prepared for him to do. Obviously, we see a nice little natural bubble here right where the play is going. Tough look for USC, of course. But the point being, they're asking their starting running back, 33, to be a fullback. They've got another running back acting as a fullback. And all you have, if you're at USC, is you've got two DBs to take on those pullers, nobody else to make a tackle. He's going to hit you in the mouth if you're not willing and you're not ready for it. So all the speed, all the options, all the tempo, Chip Kelly, ready to be physical whenever you are. Now, as we've said on a couple of different occasions here already, Chip loves to bring out these unique formations for every opponent. It seems like there's always some package that every opponent's never seen. He saves it, dials up a new one every week. Now, against Oregon a couple years ago, obviously we've already seen some unbalanced. You can see a heavy personnel, that 71, that extra tackle down at the bottom of the screen. But where your eyes go, it's where everybody's eyes go, is what is this weird Maryland offset eye and the shotgun? I've never seen a, a formation like this. But what you can see Chip does in a really interesting way is the defense is trying to figure out what to do, 
But all this play really is, is it's a counter play. Because the whole offensive line is blocking down. And we've got one blocker to kick the edge, one blocker to lead through. Typically, those guys would be coming from over here, right? That's how you'd run counter. Not this time. They're already the front side of the play. Now, you can see the back's footwork. He's going to take an inside step and go. We'll run at full speed so everybody can see it. Bam, bam. Nice lead again. Watch where these blockers are coming from. We got down block, down block, down block. And then these backs or tight ends who are lined up in the backfield, that's your counter play. Happens really quickly. The defense doesn't know where to come from. They're struggling. They're bringing a nickel blitz, and you got a nickel defender who's taking out a tight end. Easy way. Watch it from the end zone view. Look at, look, imagine seeing, lining up on defense and seeing this. What in the world are you supposed to do there? How do you line up? What is your call? Has anyone ever seen that look? Of course not. So again, outside, lead, down block from the tackle. Just an interesting new wrinkle. You see them every game from Chip, Chelly, Chip Kelly in the run game. Just fun stuff to, that you, we see. We're going to show one more counter play, which is a great example of how Chip will test the eye discipline of defenders, how he's consistently showing them so much window dressing things to distract them from what is actually happening on the play. So as you can see, double tight ends over here to the right side. Before we even get going at all, they're both going to shift over to the left, forcing the defense to account, move. They've got to move on the fly. And then just you can see a quick motion here right before the snap. Wait. Got somebody coming in. That's number 10. That's a wide receiver, right? He's motioned in very quickly just as the ball is being snapped. But as we get started, what you'll see, who is pulling on this play? we got a nice counter, right? we got a down block, down block, down block. Both those tight ends down blocking, okay? The two players pulling are center. Not a big deal. He's going to kick out. But actually, it's going to be that wide receiver. He is actually going to lead around the same way you would often see from a tight end, right? So we, we saw a one receiver getting involved in the blocking scheme before. Now we've got a second, right? So as we lead the play through, running back takes, we can see number 10. This is a wide receiver on a linebacker. And watch the job he does here. Really squares him up, creates the hole. Watch it one more time on 53. He's going to create enough contact. Now we got poor leverage from number four, the safety. Nobody's inside, creating this big cutback lane. But again, this is a wide receiver getting involved in the blocking scheme, pulling on a counter play. Really nice design, testing the defense, keeping them out leveraged. They're not sure where it's coming from. Good job by number 20 here to climb all the way up, right? But just a nice counter play design, using the wide receiver, using your personnel in different ways, creating a big game. All right, we're going to finish with some option concepts showing that those are really still part of Chip's offense. This is a uh, play from this past season. Uh, you know, there's been some people seeing, you know, as soon as Chip got hired, you heard people saying, oh, great, we've got Trevion Henderson, Quinshawn Judkins in the backfield. They can run the triple option again. And other folks saying, oh, that's not what Chip does. But he still will run the triple option. And I think this is a great proof of, of how that looks. Very similar to those old school Oregon teams. If your only memory of what he did there was that 2010 Rose Bowl. This is going to look very familiar, right? So as we can see by the yellow box, that's the first read. That's going to be an inside zone handoff. If that defensive end crashes down, the quarterback's going to keep. And then he's going to read that alley defender as his pitch man. And that's where he's going to decide whether I keep it and you know cut up field or I'm going to pitch. That's the green. So let's watch how this takes place in real time. It happens so fast. Okay, you can see... Coming down from 46, so I'm going to pull it as a quarterback. Takes it outside. Alley defender takes the pitch. Quarterback keep. Big first down. This is as old school Chip Kelly as you're going to find. He is still willing to pull this out when it's needed. I am sure we're going to see some of these questions, these, these from Ohio State. Just you might not see it every week, and I think that's the big difference in, in Chip is he's not going to do the same thing over and over now. He's only going to pull it out when it's necessary. All right, so we just showed the old school way Chip would run the triple option, but He's certainly doing it in kind of a newfangled RPO manner as well, which is why you don't see that two-back triple option every week. Now, this is three concepts packaged into one. Uh, as you can see at the top, we've got three receivers in a bunch set. They're just running a screen concept. Now, the first read for the quarterback is he's going to look up there and say, are there three defenders? And if that's the case, then I'm moving on. I'm not running that play. That's a relief. It's totally there just to say if there's only two defenders up top, then yeah, the quarterback's taking the snap, throwing that quick screen. But at the bottom, what we can see is there's 
uh, a quarterback counterplay that they're going to block. You can see the right tackle and right guard are going to pull left. The rest of the line is going to block down. And then the, the person that they're going to read is that right side defensive end. Because if he reads that counter, steps inside, then we've just got a quick, easy pitch toss to the running back for a big gain. And that's what you end up seeing. So as we progress, that line, he steps down, that defensive end, right? He is, he is actually looking eyes on the backfield. And already, you can see, look at the leverage that that back has got on that defensive end, right? So the quarterback makes the right read. I'm just going to make this quick pitch. Forget that. And now it's a race to the sideline between a running back and that defensive end. You can still see him chasing all the way downfield. Poor number 91. He didn't ask for this. But yet, he steps down just one step. And now instead of throwing the screen up top, right, that's where the first place could have gone. Quarterback could also keep behind these two blockers. But no, he is betting on that running back. This is the pitch, right? That's the pitch phase of this triple option. So many places for the ball to go. Really just showing how different and how much Chip has evolved. Obviously, he's not unique in running these types of triple option concepts. Guys like Hugh Freeze, Gus Malzahn, they've been running him for a long time. But this is who Chip is these days. He's willing to take what the defense is giving them. He's going to put them in conflict and make them earn every single negative yard that they take. He's not going to line up and just try to out-bully you with the same concepts over and over again. So a lot of different ways that Chip Kelly can attack a defense. Really interesting concepts that he can add to what Ohio State's already been doing. A lot of overlap conceptually. A lot of still inside-outside zones. Some counter plays. But how he runs those, how he disguises them pre-snap, that's going to be the difference that hopefully we see from Ohio State's offense. A little bit less predictable, putting defenses in conflict in other ways just so they can open up those running lanes for Travion Henderson, Quinshawn Judkins. This has been Kyle Jones from 11 Warriors Film Study. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon.